Hey, it's Harris again. This video is on the biggest fears people have in depersonalization disorder. And I'm going to kind of break down sort of the health related fears, then we'll go into obsessions in the second part of the video. Uh, to, to start with, a lot of people, when they get depersonalization, or even if they've had it for a while, they fear certain things. They fear that there might be a problem with their physical brain, that they might have a tumor in their brain, that something's wrong with their brain. They might fear going insane or developing a psychotic disorder. Uh, they might fear that they have a body problem. So they might think that their lungs aren't working properly, that their heart isn't working properly. Okay. Uh, they, they might be afraid of those kinds of things, okay? And then you've got the, the existential kind of fears that are sort of obsessions. And they tend, tend to revolve around wanting control uh, of things, like desiring you know, intellectual control and fearing losing control. So fear of losing your soul, will, agency, fear that you've already died, fear that the world around you is unreal, a fear that being aware of depersonalization and derealization uh, will make it impossible for you to live a normal life, that the obsession itself will make it so hard for you to focus that you'll never be able to go on, uh, fear of uncertainty about all matter of existential philosophical and religious issues, so types of existential obsessions, free will versus determinism, how can the universe be infinite? Or if you're just kind of thinking about the universe and you're sort of just almost in this state of panic at how incomprehensible the whole universe is. Uh, how is it that I have a soul or a consciousness? Maybe you, you, you want answers on how in the hell does this work that I'm even alive? Uh, how is it possible that my body functions without me knowing it? And all, all, all these kinds of things. First of all, I, I want to start off with kind of the, the first the first fears I brought up. If you're afraid that you have a brain problem, if you're afraid you're going insane, or if you're afraid you have any sort of health problem, go get tests. Go get testing done. Now, a lot of it is basically just fear-driven. A lot of it's kind of like health anxiety, hypochondriasis, which is very much kind of OCD. You can't get these thoughts out of your head. And when in depersonalization, we feel, right, we, we feel crazy. So what you can do is, if you're worried about something that's wrong with your brain, get a brain scan. Okay, that, that, that's one thing you can do. Worry that you're going to go insane, get a psychiatric evaluation from a great psychiatrist. If you're worried that your heart or your lungs are having a problem, you can get a... EKG of your heart, or you can get a cardiopulmonary stress test where they hook you up with EKG and you run on a little treadmill and they track your breathing and everything like that. That will pretty much rule out if your heart or your lungs have a problem. You know, you can get blood tests done if you're worried about STDs or something like that. You can get a full blood and urine panel uh, for, for all STDs. You can get your thyroid checked. A lot of times thyroid problems can, can be, uh, can cause you to feel weird. You know, you can just get all, all sorts of tests done to rule out, to rule out problems. I mean, some people talk about Lyme disease causing depersonalization, you know, get, get tests done. I mean, that, that's really kind of, first of all, that's kind of the, the safe thing to do. Some people might say, oh, that's reassurance seeking, right? When, when it comes to anxiety, oh, you're just seeking reassurance. Well, you want to know. You want to know. Now, at some point, there will come a time when you get the testing done, and hopefully you have health insurance if you're in the United States, because we don't have good health insurance, right? If you're in Norway or Belgium or one of these Scandinavian or, or European countries with a great welfare system and it's and going to a psychiatrist is basically covered, go to a psychiatrist or get get the brain scan done if you can. You know what I'm saying? Get the testing done. Just get it out of the way so that that will rule that out. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, there are some downsides to that. I mean, even if you like if you go to a psychiatrist, no matter 
what you say, they'll probably try to push some medication on you. And, and ultimately, it's your choice. Just look into what you're taking, especially if it's an SSRI. I mean, my opinion on SSRIs is that they are placebos. You know, they don't they don't really work. I mean, but hey, it's your decision. So what will probably happen is you'll you'll realize there's nothing wrong with your brain that the psychiatrist will probably say you either have anxiety or maybe like a little bit of depression. Or if they know about depersonalization, maybe they'll say that. Uh, your heart and your lungs are probably fine. You're, you're probably totally healthy. Although they might, you know, there's always something that, that could be caught. And I think getting testing done is great because our medical industry is not really about preventative medicine. It's about you getting a problem so bad to the point where you're fucked and you're on the verge of dying. And then they go in and they operate on you or do something, you know. So the medical system isn't really there to keep you alive, all right? It's there to make money off you. So if, if, you're, if you're worried, go, go get testing done. Now, when it comes to the obsessional issues, this mostly revolves around two things. Desiring a delusional level of control and having a high high uh, lack of tolerance for uncertainty. You have a low tolerance for uncertainty. So when it comes to these really big existential issues, and I talked about this in a previous video on existential thoughts, you have to have a tolerance for uncertainty. So once you pretty much know within a 99.9% .9 range that you're fine, essentially, you're, you're healthy, then it's time to address your tolerance for uncertainty. And when it comes to these existential issues, you, you get into sort of the skeptical realm. You're, you're getting into the realm of, well, can anything be known? And well, you know, philosophers and, and people can debate about this for hours. So how am I going to come? How are you going to come to a conclusion? On, on all these issues. And ultimately, you have to have a tolerance for uncertainty. You, you've got to realize that you're looking around at your environment, you're safe, but you're questioning things. And questioning things isn't bad, right? Like I've said before, you can write these things down. You know, it, it's okay to think them, but just make sure you, you do it in a focused way. Maybe like get it out of your head, okay? So we develop a tolerance for uncertainty and then focus on how can you kind of compartmentalize this urge in you to question. But ultimately, you're, you're fine in depersonalization. You're fine. And you're actually very sane because you're thinking about elements of existence that a lot of people don't even think about they don't think about they don't um, they don't tend to think about the automatic nature of human existence a lot of things are automatic your heart's beating your lungs are working you've got all these organ you know all your organs are are working i mean your your gut is almost like a brain in and of itself you know you, it, that that's working and you've got everything going and that's actually a good thing because in depersonalization, we desire control. We wish, we just wish we, we, we could have answers on everything. We're obsessed with controlling. And one of the big things about depersonalization is that the more we try to feel certain about everything and having intellectual control, we feel more out of control. So you've got to kind of come to terms with a, a little bit of uncertainty uh, when, when it comes to a lot of these things. Or, you know, I mean, some people find great peace in, in, uh, in religion, you know. Do I agree with that maybe from an intellectual standpoint? I, I you know, I, that's, that's not for me to tell you, but some people, you know, find, find a lot, hey, billions of people find peace in religion, right? Or just they find peace in coming to terms with the nature of existence, but if you want if you want absolute certainty on on all these fears, you're probably not going to find it. And I mean, I know that that's that's a little bit unsettling, but then it, again, it kind of makes life interesting, right? I mean, it makes life very 
very interesting. But you are you are not going insane. You know what I'm saying? You're not going insane. But if you keep wanting answers to everything, like, I mean, if, is the world unreal? Is it real? Can we ever know if the world is real? How do I know that I'm real? What is consciousness? And, and all these things. I mean, ultimately, me getting over depersonalization, did it really have to do with solving these issues? No, it didn't. Because are you thinking about your emotions? <laughs> are you thinking about, hey, like, how am I feeling about myself? And this is why I'm so big on the family issues part, is because when you start dealing with emotions, well, that's interesting. That, that doesn't get talked about a lot. The, the two big things that get talked about a lot on the internet when it comes to depersonalization is, what fucking medication can I pop? Or what, like, supplement can I take? Or what kind of external thing can I do to get rid of this problem? And the other thing are, are the existential issues which people ruminate on. And they're not really thinking about themselves or their life or kind of just the reality. They're actually not really focusing on their life. By thinking about life, they're not living life. That's that paradox I like to talk about. They're thinking about life. They're not living life. It's like... The life is the painting. You need to be the painting. You need to be living life. That's that's really kind of the, the correction a lot of people need to make. They need to get off of this whole wanting a medical cure for everything and then wanting to just get answers on all their existential questions, which I don't have for you. I, I, don't, I don't have answers to your existential questions, and that's not, the, that's not, the, that's not how you're going to get over the feeling of depersonalization. You know, that's something you, you got to realize is, is you're not going to get over the feeling of depersonalization by answering your existential question. There's various things you can do. Like, like I said, focus on your emotions, which comes down to learning about your past, how the emotions carry down, and also how you feel about your life right now. What, what, how are you suppressing your emotions? How is these existential thoughts are actually distractions. They're actually dissociative distractions that get you away from thinking about your life, and your emotions. The emotions, which are the things that connect your mind to your body, are being split off from, and you're freaking out about existence. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I think people think this way is because they come from dysfunctional family systems where they're relating to parents that aren't, that aren't doing a good enough job, right? Emotionally, in particular, and socially, and, and raising the child, and, and, and attuning to that, that growing person's needs you your needs weren't adequately attuned to and so what we do what kids tend to do in this situation especially in disorganized attachment is they develop controlling strategies okay they become parentified they try to control the interaction with the parent because they they aren't getting their emotional needs met so they try to control the interaction there's different controlling relational strategies that people use and so then you take this strategy into adulthood, right? And that's part of the defensive shell is the controlling strategy. But then you get into a situation that breaks that controlling strategy and makes you feel out of control. So then what do you do? You resort to your previous defense strategy, which is control. And then, and then you realize when you get the dissociative split of depersonalization, if, especially if it's in a panic attack, you feel out of control and you want control again. But you have to just kind of let go. And develop the functional tools to deal with your life. That's ultimately the solution for dealing with depersonalization and for dealing with these fears, for dealing with these great feels, these great fears, because you feel out of control. And your strategy is to try to control more. And you feel more out of control, more afraid. You know, and in addition to all this stuff, the emotional, uh, is to fill your mind with things, to get out of your head, you know, to live life, to be in a flow state, to engage in an activity that, that, that totally consumes your, your consciousness in that moment where the challenge meets your skill and you can, you can grow. 
as a person. So you, you have to get out, out of your head and into life. And these questions are still going to be there. They're still going to be there. But thinking about them all day ultimately isn't going to uh, get you to get over depersonalization. But if you're really worried, like I said at the, at the beginning of this video, get testing done. Get testing done. That's it. You know? And, I mean, if, if you want answers to these questions, read books, talk to people of different perspectives, different philosophies, different faiths even, and explore, explore the topic interpersonally with people. You know? Talk about it with people. Uh, but don't be surprised if you don't come up with a, a, a great, a great conclusive answer on a lot of these issues. So that's the video today. Hopefully that helps you address a lot of these big fears. They really, they're kind of, they're kind of actually a distraction from your emotions, which is the thing you're dissociating from. You're dissociating from the painful emotions and from the things in your life that you don't want to focus on. Things about yourself that you don't want to focus on, unprocessed parts of yourself. And so what do we do? Well, one, one great way of dis dissociating is to think about something other than the painful thing, right? It's, it's a way of, of kind of that, that our mind uses to get us to dissociate. So hopefully that video is helpful and helps you kind of live, live with just a less fearful life. I mean, and to really take control and and live the life you want. So, take care.